P orbitals, these are principal orbitals. And this is where you have a orbital quantum number of 1, or L equals 1, are more complex. And remember what I said, as you move up the shells, it's possible to accommodate more and more electrons. The only way to do this, of course, is to have more and more different types of orbital. And here we can see three of these, the 2PY, the 2PX, and the 2PZ. Note the number prior to the PY, PX, and PZ correlates to the principal quantum number, which in this case is the lowest one for p orbitals of 2. It is, of course, possible to get 3p and 4p orbitals, but of course not possible to get 1p. You haven't unlocked them at that point. Note the similarities between these guys. Uh, they are uh, dumbbell-shaped, is often uh, the shape that's considered, and their orientation is along the three component axes, that is the y-axis, the x-axis, and the z-axis, as shown in, uh, in, uh, in this particular slide. Crucially, if we look in the center where the node is formed, where we have the tiny um, spot in the center, is where the nucleus is. And there, we have an electron density of zero. Now, the question you may be asking is, well, why are they shaded differently? And this is what I'm going to uh, come to uh, in a moment. A p orbital has two regions where electrons may be found on either side. Note what I've done is we've got a, a plane through uh, the node of the p orbital, as shown here. And along that plane, there exists no electron density, as it contains the nucleus. But, again, what is the significance of the negative and the positive charges? And this is to do with the phase of electrons. Now, remember what I said. We tried to discount the idea of treating electrons as particles, because it created a lot of theoretical problems for us. In fact, we understand that electrons exist in shells and can only go up or down those shells by absorbing or giving off quanta of energy. Equally, we talked about electrons existing in waves, and that's why we can only talk about the probability of finding them in particular parts um, of an atom. And this is the same analogy, because in this case, we're talking about wave coherence. We're talking about whether or not an electron exists um, as the peak here of the trough that we're showing here, this sine wave, or as the trough. Right, so as I mentioned, um, it's possible for, to treat electrons as waves um, as well as as particles. Uh, and in the context of the p orbital, this is very important. So if we look at uh, this waveform here, uh, we can see that it is um, analogous uh, to the uh, dumbbell shape of our p orbital where if we see in the, the centre node, the chances of finding an electron are zero. But the chances of finding an electron either side are reasonably high. So, if we think of an electron as a wave with positive and negative regions, we can think about the ideas of coherence, i.e. constructive or destructive interference. So, as there are three p orbitals, there needs to be a way of telling them apart, because if you look here, you can see uh, that they are degenerate. And by that, what I'm talking about here is the idea that you could superimpose one on the other by a simple rotation around 90 degrees. And so a way of defining an electron in a given p orbital is via the magnetic quantum number, or ML. Okay, Not to be confused with MS. That is a different one, which we will come on to a little later. So this helps us to define the direction uh, of an orbital as well um, as its type. So here we can see we've got the orbital running along the y-axis, then across the x-axis, and then finally along the z-axis. So, d orbitals. These have a more complex set of shapes, and they have the orbital quantum number of 2. The d in d orbital stands for diffuse, and they have 
two nodal planes and come in sets of five. The ML, or magnetic uh, orbital number, can be minus two, minus one, zero, one, or two. And don't just take it uh, and accept it as red. There is actually an equation which we'll come on to in the next lecture, which explains how you can uh, determine this yourselves. The lowest energy shell uh, containing d orbitals is n equals 3. Prior to that, they haven't been unlocked. Degeneracy. This is what I alluded to in the case of the p orbitals, and as we'll see a little later on, in the d orbitals. These are orbitals with the same energy. When they have the same energy and they have the same orientation, they're regarded as degenerate. In other words, they're superimposable onto each other. And this is the case for p and also some of the d orbitals. And degeneracy uh, is based on the idea that whilst they have the same energy and the electrons or the probability of finding them is the same diff distance from the nucleus, they point in different directions by rotating them 90 degrees in the three axes, however, they would all be identical. They're all superimposable, and therefore, they're termed degenerate. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions, customized to US MLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.